Hello and welcome to another episode of Shampoo and Booze. This is episode number 49 at shampooandbooze.com. Somebody emailed us with a very good topic yes. for us to kind of begin. Um, and that is, they're starting a rental in Airbnb. Yeah. And they're like, what kind of furniture should I get? Do you have like a podcast about that? And yes, we do. It's right here. It's right now. This is it. <laughs> so um, here's the deal. Number one is... We buy as much furniture as we can off of Craigslist. Right. Or uh, auctions, but we haven't been going to right, auctions. Or auctions. Really. And, and that's only because we normally have time before the a rental is actually in action. Right. So we have time to actually collect that stuff. Right. And if you live in an urban area or buy an urban area, I mean, it's just incredible what people are basically giving away. Yeah. Like we live near D.C. Right. And maybe that's a you know a more a special kind of urban area because if you have a lot of people coming and going. They come in, they work six months, and they leave. Right. And they're like, "Hey, I bought all of this, you know, brand a, new high end furniture, West furniture, and now I'm just giving it away." And they sell it, you know, at like a tenth of the price. Yeah. So that's actually what we've been doing. It recently we've for our a rental we bought a bed, we bought uh, a chair, yep, two a chairs. fancy chair. Um, you know we've been we've been scavenging for that stuff that the hard thing is is storage because right now the river house is under renovation so you can't really store that stuff there right. so it's kind of like anywhere it can fit it's sitting right. i mean and and it's really just a balance between you know do you want to take the time to search for this stuff to make the deal online to drive and go get it to bring it back you know i mean or do what I think a lot of people do is they just go to Ikea. And just buy They all. have a list of stuff. They buy all brand new. And then they come home and they got to put it all together. Right. But <laughs> then they have it. So it's really just a balance. I think for us on this as a rental, we're trying to put nicer furniture in. So for the same cost of stuff that we would buy brand as new at Ikea, we could get a gently it's used really fancy couch from... West Elm or design it's within reach or yeah. a room and board, you know. So I think when someone comes into our newer edge rental, there's going to be a much higher quality. And it didn't cost us any more than if we just bought it all brand new at Ikea. Right. Now, when we did the farmhouse, we had been scavenging for things, but then certain pieces just weren't working. We were like, this is not working in this room. So we actually bought a bunch of new stuff at Ikea. Beds. And that's, right. And, the, and that's because, like I said, we were kind of pressed for time. We were like, this has to get on the market. Like, now. 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 Yeah. So and the it. thing about Airbnb, it, which is different than, I guess, like if you're flipping a house, like you have to stage the house perfectly to take photos in order to put it online to rent. So it's not like you can be like, we have this house that's going to be ready at this time. It's like, no, you have to it's gonna be have ready now. the bed spreads that you're using on the beds to take photos. That was the thing about the farmhouse that was so crazy. I was like, this place has to be exactly design perfect because we have to take photos. Yep. Okay, so. so, but let's be more so, that kind of where we get our furniture. Yeah. So let's be specific. Right. We all have different styles, and that's great, but this is what works for us, and this is what we look for when we stay in an Airbnb. Yes. Number one, king-size bed. King-size bed. So the person who contacted us said, "I've either I'm getting a queen-size bed or I've got a queen-size bed, and I said, if this space holds a king-size bed, put a king-size bed in. And that's just because I think a lot of people don't, allow themselves to have a king size bed in their own home. They're uh, expensive. Yeah, in in they take up a lot of room. Yeah. But a king size bed is luxurious. And the great thing is you can find king size beds on for Craigslist. Really cheap. Oh totally. Number two is and it's not really furniture, but like things to put in your house are hooks. hooks. We're huge hook fans because having drawers isn't as interesting because if I'm only staying there for two nights. Two nights, even a week I don't. I don't necessarily need a bunch of drawers. I'm I, not moving. I in. do want to contradict you because we have drawers everywhere in the farmhouse, and that is because if you are staying for a week, you do unpack your bags, or you want okay. the choice to unpack your bags. So I think it's good to have storage space drawers. Okay. We do have drawers, but for me, yes, I go to hooks, hooks first, first, yes. because I'm basically here for a short amount of time. Yeah, I don't have a lot of stuff, right. but if there's a lot of hooks, I can put. My clothes, towels, yep. you know, all that stuff. 
belts, we, just put all that stuff up so I can see it. We stayed at a hotel over the holidays, like right before we were um, taking a train home. We stayed like right next to the train station. And I took a shower and whatever, and I was like, there are no hooks in this hotel room at all. I have no place to hang my jacket. I have no place to hang my sweater or my towel. And it was just funny being in like kind of a high-end-ish, you know, hotel that I did not pay high-end price for, by the way. And just not, and I'm like, the most basic thing is to have hooks. And, and I mean, we just say it all the time. Right. And, and, you know, I don't mean just like one hook. A I row mean, of hooks. Right. Five hooks. And it's know. the cheapest thing to do. It's so, um, so easy. And, and, the, and then as far as couches go, like we're always about giving people like a sweet experience. Right. You know, not sweet as in sweet dude. I mean yeah. like a bedroom suite. A you know? sweet, yes. Uh, like where you have not, you know, like I always hate going into a hotel room and there's like the bed and a dresser. And so you just have to sit on the bed right. just to sit there. So we always make sure there's like a little couch. A chair, you know, you know a love seat, right. something like something where people can lounge. Yeah. And, if you have the room. Right. And, and we've know. stayed in Airbnbs where people just put in, because I guess it's just cheaper. They put in just like a wooden cheap chairs so i guess it is officially a chair i can sit in <laughs> but why not just put in something more comfortable i i will know? never forget the one place we stayed in ireland i won't name who it is but they had this tiny love seat and you know what their rooms their rooms were quite big and they had room for a proper couch they had this tiny love seat that honestly two people could not fit on we were like this is so small so you sat on a wooden chair and when i say wooden i mean like it's like a cane chair it was like a caned yeah it's an antique chair that's like these days is not meant to be sit on i i I honestly think it was just decoration and you just sat in that chair and pouted you're like i hate this you were so (laughs) mad because you know we were like you know there for three days to enjoy ourselves and you know there was a nice little wood stove right and then I'm just sitting in this little cane chair, like trying to do work on a computer. Okay. And it's just so, it was so frustrating. It was know? frustrating. Um, yeah, and, yeah. and so, okay, here's, here's the way to solve it. Yes. Stay in your own place Stay there, for yeah. a couple of nights. Right. You know, and that's what before you rent it. Did. Yeah. We like went over there and acted like we were a guest and we like we got Chinese food. Slept in the bed. We ordered food. We watched TV. We took showers mm-hmm. and we just started being like, what do we need? One thing was, I don't know what light switch does what. I mean, right. it, it's our own house. Let's put labels on, on every light single switches. light switch. So look, there are so many places. But look, we're doing the electrical at the River House right now. And it's so funny because we're like, okay, in this room, this has to turn this on. So like it's a four, you know, outlet switch. You're like, how is anyone going to know this? So yeah, you have to put, you know what? I have labels on switches in my own house because I'm like, is this the fan or the light? I always forget. <laughs> Just label it. It's yeah. so easy. And we get a lot of compliments for that yes. in our interviews. And, you know, also, if you have a place where, you know, it, people are wanting to cook, yeah. cook Kitchen. meals in there. Make and, sure you have the right utensils. And so what we did was we had some dinner parties over there yes. where we invited friends. I mean, also because we wanted to uh, show off our place because right. we were very it's proud fun. of what we had done. And so we would cook full meals there and I'd be like, oh, no, I don't have like... A casserole a, dish. A grater and a casserole, you know, and then when the food is is done and we have stuff left over, I don't have containers for that yeah, stuff. Yeah, like Tupperware. You know. So we now have a full kitchen. We have all that stuff. Of stuff. And the great thing is when people stay there and they do cook, like people have Thanksgiving there. They tell us, oh, I needed, someone said, oh, I needed a bread knife. And we were like, oh, we had one, but maybe we need another one because <laughs> yeah. it wasn't good enough, apparently. And also, and this is, again, it's like a fine line between quirky and cheap. I mean, like, definitely the way we have furniture at our, our rental is, like, you know, eclectic. There's all kinds of different yeah. kinds of furniture. But I feel like it, it works together. Like, yeah. they kind of match together. Right. And And I think that's a real danger of being too quirky where you're buying stuff at thrift stores or that 
you know, the, a silverware is like all just different because you just went to the a, a thrift store and just grabbed a big handful. You like <laughs> it's so cheap. If you want to make sure it feels like things have been kind of like well curated, curated. I mean, that right? sounds snobby, but if this is your business and you're trying to attract people and you're competing with 25 other people on and your charge block, higher prices, yeah, you and know, charge higher it's, prices. It's good to uh, you have to curate the space and you have to look. This is what I always say about other people in our area people who have been doing this for a long time and i see the the hunting cabins or like the granny i call them granny cabins there is no design nobody thought about anything they put a kitchen table there that they bought at walmart they just went to the the yeah they either went to a walmart and just bought Whatever is cheapest. Or they, or they went to Ikea and bought, you know, everything new, which isn't right. the worst. But right. it, it doesn't really feel like anyone's really thought of anything. Or they just go to the local uh, uh, it's thrift store into the basement and just grabbed whatever, whatever furniture, you know, a, a recliner, a table. When we, some, bought you know. the, when we bought the River House, I was appalled at the furniture. <laughs> they had recliners that were so dirty that... I could not believe that they rented that place and like did not get put out of business. I was like, I would not even sit in this chair. It's so gross. It's number one, it's from the eighties, and number two, it's got stains all over the head thing. And oh, and to be fair, I mean, this is something we've just learned over time. I remember when we first started buying furniture for yes. our, our, our rental. Yes, I mean, I didn't know when. We didn't I mean, know. I thought IKEA was like the height of, of right of uh, fashion. And then I learned that there's all these other stores. And so I learned keywords to put into its Craigslist. Yes. And and maybe people have uh, more keywords, and I would love to hear them. Yeah. West Elm. Restoration Hardware. Crate and Barrel. Room and Board. Design Within Reach. Uh, I do search for Ikea still. Yeah. There I mean, are Ikea pieces yeah. that I want. Ikea is all good. Uh, but I mean, if you look at the quality between those other brands I just said versus Ikea, I mean, if all being the same, why not go for the higher, the higher quality, end, right, you know? right. Uh, especially if people are willing, I mean, I mean, the thing is we'll I'll look at Craigslist post where someone's like, I paid $5,000 for this couch a year ago. It doesn't work with my room. So we're just going to get rid of it. $800. I mean, like, think of that price drop. I, you know, I don't understand people who do that, but why not take advantage of those kind of deals? I mean, we're not going to pay $800 for a couch, but... But wait, anyway, wait, real quick, though. We, we, we might. We, I mean, we talked about that. I mean, yeah. why not? Because if you go to Ikea, you know... Couches you, are expensive. If, yeah. If you buy a new couch yeah. from Ikea, $800 would be... You about know, new. You know, so why not pay eight hundred dollars for a five thousand dollar a lightly couch. used couch, <laughs> yeah. which you know, and so it's made out of solid wood and might be down filled and you it's know, it's got better fabric. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so that's... so basically, we are now snobs about brands. <laughs> no, but 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 it's true because like you want. I mean, the the thing about IKEA too is a lot of times. Since it's already one to two years old, it's already going to be a little scuffed up and stuff. And so, right. you know, when you're buying it off Craigslist, you're like, ah, it's a little more worn. Okay. I it reject the, the, the name of snob. It's just that we're simply, <laughs> it's business. Yes. If you have a higher, if we have higher quality furniture, yes. we can charge, charge more. more yeah. And when people stay, they will be satisfied. Yeah. You know, and they will be like, wow. And... You know? What we've always said, and this this is all about the king size bed. This is what this is the reason I always say we have a king size bed. You want the house or the apartment or whatever you're renting to be nicer than where someone already lives, right? Because they're on vacation or right. they're traveling, and it's like to have a place that's you know obviously it's not filled with stuff like you know your own house, so that helps. But you have nice furniture, you have comfortable furniture, you have nice amenities, you know. It's just like someone's paying to stay there and they really should feel like it's a special place. I agree. So there was an article in the uh, New York Times that some of you might have seen where their technology guy, the their a writer, he has an Airbnb oh. and he wrote a guide to how to be an Airbnb super host. Interesting. Really nothing special. I'm sure it's everything as many of us are all already know, but I will link to that on the blog. Oh, that's cool. You can, 
and you read it. And he actually, I mentioned, because I guess he lives near San Francisco and has a place like outside in the mm. country. Yeah. He was like, his 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 one story was focused around someone had rented his place and then his neighbor said they were having a party there, mm. a wedding. Oh. And he actually, what he did was he called Airbnb and they canceled the reservation and then made the guy leave, which is so interesting. So did yeah. he get paid? I guess he got paid, but, you know, yeah. uh, the person that stayed had oh, to leave, like, which, which would stick with like it. Right in the middle Wouldn't of your wedding? to have a wedding and then... No, but, right. but the, the, the problem is if you didn't let the owner know you were having your wedding, right. that's a distinct possibility. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely going to read that. That's so interesting. And then uh, before we kind of talk about some of our uh, numbers and stuff, I learned, and I did not know this... You do not have to pay FICA tax on rental income because it's passive income. You know, in FICA taxes, yeah, explain social, what that is. Social, social Security, security and Medicare. It's just Social Security. Okay, why is it called FICA? So FICA stands for Federal In- Insurance Contribution Act tax. Okay, and that's the federal payroll or employment tax imposed on both employees and employers to fund Social sec- uh, Security, social security okay. in. A Medicare. See, I'm, I was I'm right. Wrong. Yeah. Right. So, so th- that's good. And so I didn't know that that was true. So when we met our uh, accountant uh, a week ago to kind of talk about yeah. tax stuff, I said, have we been paying taxes on this? He was like, of course not. We're, we I love that. He was like, of course you See, are. See, I love that. It makes me feel so happy. I'm like, okay, so they do know what they're doing, which yeah. obviously they should. I mean, and it just shows there are just so many tax benefits for people that own property, property. and do it's rental. So I guess thank God for the as lobbyists for who do all okay. that stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah, well, it's good to know. Okay, let's talk about our farmhouse. So our rental. It's the very slow season right it now. It has been dead. Dead, completely dead. In January, we have one booking. Next weekend. And that's it. I mean, I just think... We're not getting inquiries. We're not no getting, questions, no future I've bookings. lowered our prices to as low as we feel like we would go to go through all right. the work of having yeah. someone come and stay. And... Uh, it's dead. It's the it is the dead of winter, and the holidays just happened, and people already traveled, and yeah. they're back to work. And, and it's, you know, and where we are, it's cold. Like there's no outdoor stuff to be done. Yeah, we're not in like a ski area, so people can't. I mean, people could hike, but it's just you know, it's, it's just it's, it's kind of gross outside. It's actually like freezing rainstorm yeah. today. It's like ugh. But I guess, and we just haven't figured out how to do it yet. But we've always imagined like our place would be perfect in the a winter time for like someone that it wants to come and write. Or because like, it's so quiet, there's no distractions. Do you want to come somewhere quiet and do a project? Yeah. And it, Some, and like, online really, person. Or, yeah, we, we haven't really found that person yet. I, I, I just, I don't know how to market that other than if someone's looking for it and they find it on Airbnb. So, talking about furniture. Yes. So, we're always looking for ways. This is this will be our third year coming up. Yes. The, where it's been in action and people are yeah. staying. So we're always trying to improve the place because we are starting to get people come back right. a second, third, and fourth time. Yeah. And we wanted them to see that we're investing in the we're improving this yeah. property. So it's, we're always buying like a little small things to improve. Right. So one thing we did was our last person that stayed said one of our queen beds isn't really a queen bed. It's like a pull-out bed. It's a pull-out. It's an, L, it's an L-shaped couch. It's Ikea. It's a great couch. It's a great couch, right? And it pulls out into a queen size bed. But for a while now, we've been like, you know, this isn't as nice as it could be. And you have been the main proponent of that. Like, I'm like, oh, whatever, it's fine. Um, but but like if you actually had to sleep on that, it it would be OK, but it wouldn't be it's like super nice. It looks yours. And the reason why we did that was, you know, it's in like a small, a little cabin, and we wanted there to be there isn't enough room for a bed and a couch. Right. So we wanted do the combo a bed couch. Yeah. <laughs> but now we, so we actually went on Craigslist and bought a West Elm bed that was probably, you know, how much two three thousand dollars. We bought it for four hundred dollars, including the mattress. Right. A really nice a West Elm mattress. So we're actually putting 
an actual queen size bed in so, that cabin. Yeah, and then it's going to be really, really nice. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be plush. Right. Um. So that's going to be nice. Um. It's also uh going to happen in one of our other rooms. Uh. We have a. It's a twin bed that's a trundle that pulls out into a king, which is nice, but it's tough because I think people are like, mm, this isn't as nice as an actual bed. My thinking on that bed was I always liked it because it was king size when you pulled it out. So you have this nice big bed. But I think people still feel like it's a kid's bed because right. it kind of is. Right. So if there's a grown couple that's in there, they're like, we're kind of in a kid's and, bed. And it's just because of our uh, situation. We have a small farmhouse. So, you know, rooms right. back in the 1800s they're small. weren't like in America where there are huge yeah. auditoriums. They're very <laughs> small rooms. Right. And people probably slept on like a little tiny single beds. Right. So they don't really have a lot of room. But we're just going to put in nice beds. And there won't be a whole lot of other rooms. So these rooms will be sleeping rooms. Right. And then people can hang out in other parts of the house. The master suite is big because we took down a wall. Right. That's we, why that room is we big. We turned two small <laughs> to a medium rooms into one large right. suite. So that yeah. room, you're like, yeah, king size bed, no problem. But yeah, so so slowly, it, you know, it can be a pain because, you know, with the with the cabin, it's it's the third bedroom in quotes. You know, we have to go pull that couch out, and then I have to build the bed again because it's taken apart because we got it in, like, you know, Baltimore, basically. Uh, so, you know, that that's not fun. But like we're saying, it's the dead of winter. Things are slow. These are the times to do those things. Yep. So now's the time to do it before springtime. So let's talk about numbers. So we're about to do our taxes for 2016. Yes. And... We made over forty thousand dollars on our one rental. You know what our gross numbers are? What? Forty eight thousand. Wow. Almost fifty thousand. That's crazy. Gross. And we weren't even fully booked, you know, like crazy. It was two twenty nine two hundred and twenty nine right. nights. Yeah. So there's a lot of room. This is why to, we bought a second house. Yeah, like, so that's, that's the answer. Right now, there. now that's that's of course a gross. That's gross. Income. That's before taxes, before right. any expenses, right. before taking out our mortgage. and yeah, electricity. So that's just. But you know, I think we came away with thirty thousand. Thirty something. You know? So anyway, that's great. Um, now in 2017, out of 365 nights, we've only booked five nights so far. I mean, 2017 is like a ghost town right now. Right. But, but that changes. This happened to us it last year. I mean, we went into February, like, you know, ghost where's town. our bookings? Yeah. And then as it gets to March, it's the flood starts. Yeah. Now, is. in the past couple of days, we've actually been starting to get some emails through BRBO where people are Inquiries. asking for April, March. They're asking about my friend has a wedding right. in the spring. Is this right. available? I'm like, just look on the website. Well, it's, it's so funny when people ask if it, nobody ever on Airbnb asks if it's available because you kind of have to put your dates in to like search for stuff. Right. But on VRBO, people are like, how much does this cost and is it available? You're like, yeah. what's the point of the website if you're not? And it's this morning we had got an, an inquiry from a man who sounds like he's booking a week-long vacation for his family. Like spring break. And he was asking questions. And, you know, all I can do is just be like, yep, it's available. It's his cost. You know, please Yeah, look. you just have to write back. And, so yeah. it's good. Those, you know, I got to remember that's coming. Uh, you know, the a winter will be over. And let's take advantage of the slow time to, you know, continue to improve the place we have. Right. So let's talk about the uh, a river house. That's our renovation house. We started to renovate October twentieth. Yes, I'm hoping we will be we will be done March twentieth, which would be six months, a hundred and eighty days. That's six months. Yep. October, November, December, January, February. That's five months. Five months. Yeah. Five months. Five months with a hundred eighty. So that's actually pretty good if you think about it. Um. The past couple of weeks, we've been, you know, it's been bad. It's weather here. Yeah. You know, it's been like 17 degrees, rain, oh, snow. Horrible snow. It's hard to get our guys to come out and work. And Especially because we're doing outside work. I don't blame them. Uh, so, but we're almost done with the outside. We, we've, it's put on hardy board. 
Right. For those of you that don't know, it's a it's like concrete. It's cement board. board. And we use it on our house and we love it. It's more expensive than vinyl, but we love it because it lasts. it's a nice clean look and it will last forever. Yeah. Um they've also been doing the it's soffits and the uh it's metal work and trim work around the it windows and that's almost completely done. Yeah, so the, the only thing we'll have to do is the paint, you know. And you know on, what? On the outside. I'm going to paint that house yep. because it's super easy to paint hardy board. We talked about the plumbing has is already done. It's been done. The HVAC just got done. So yes. the HVAC is installed. We did the splits. Well, what? The, the, the ductless. The, there's like f- four different names for these things. It's like the zone system, right. the ductless system. People know The split system. I know, right. but it's just so funny because I'm like, can we just come up with one name? Okay. And so that got installed. Uh, it, we haven't turned it on yet because uh, we have a lot of other work to do, but it's installed and we've covered it up. Yes. Um, Great. And the electric is almost done. He'll probably be done this week. Yes. We'll do the insulation and then we'll do sheetrock. Now, let's just remind people, this is a total gut. This is not, oh, we people wanted, people, we wanted to add it. a couple. No, this is like gut yep. to the core. But it's good. We are now past the halfway mark. And yes. once the sheetrock is in and it's, you know, the, the clean walls, I mean, we're like the home stretch, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay, one thing we did this past week is we scavenged flooring. Yes. So instead of, you know, just going to Lowe's and just saying, you know, give me 1,200 square feet of whatever this... Vinyl. A laminate or whatever, which yeah. is... laminate. A valid choice. We like to find scavenged flooring, and, and maybe because we're on the East Coast, kind of in the it's southern part of the East Coast, there's just a lot of f- old flooring. From that, old barns. That you can buy on Craigslist. Houses, yeah. You know... It's beat up. Uh, oh, it's the, beat up. The tongue and groove might not all be perfect, but you can get it pretty cheap. So, But let's just say this. Once it's sanded and polyurethaned, it is the most gorgeous right. wood you could possibly... It's like a million dollars. I mean, know? it's just like, right. if you buy it... It's in like quotes, hardwood pine, basically. It's hardwood pine. It's, you know, it's got this, you know, it's, it's 200, 300 year old wood. It's just gorgeous. So... That is why we scavenge it, right. because it's beautiful. So we found um, a couple who have a farm about an hour from us, um, and they had 12-inch wide heartwood pine boards. I mean, this is a, this is the real deal stuff. This is real. From, yeah. like, the original trees when trees were so like, big. Like the, the colonists, like, cut right. these trees down, basically. Uh, and he said that it got pulled out of an old church that, that got torn down. He's like, he wasn't going to... And use it, and he sold it to us for three hundred bucks. Here's why he sold it to us for three hundred. He said he had eight hundred square feet. From the photos, it didn't look like eight hundred square feet. I did the calculation based on what he said, and I was like, he'd need fifty boards of twelve inch by sixteen foot long, which is basically what they all were. And when we got there, thank God Jay did this. He counted them, and he knew we needed fifty boards to be what he said he had. And you're like, you have about twenty boards, which is half. So, because he was asking six hundred dollars, he was asking originally like seven hundred dollars, and you were like, would you take three hundred for this? Because the wood was rough too; it was not like beautiful, perfect wood. And he was like, sure. <laughs> like he just was, wanted it gone. He wanted it gone. Yeah. So we were like, great. Yep. That was wonderful. So, so have you talked to to our carpenter guys? Yeah, about and using they were it? like, it's like he's like, this is great. I mean, <laughs> wow. I mean, the, you that's know, that's incredible. I mean, let's just be clear though. Going to Lowe's and buying just brand new out of the box. The good thing about that is. It's ready to go. You don't you have to buy sand it. it. One guy and yeah. and one guy can just like click lock it. It's and, just and in. the whole house is done. And, and then it's done. done. And the way we're talking about is a little crazier, but you get a better product, and that is, you know, you get this rough wood. You have to have guys that know how to install it. They have to kind of fight it with it. It's it's a puzzle because you know we yeah. can't get you know twelve hundred square feet of the same stuff. We're getting. 300 here, 300 there. You have to do different rooms. And so they have to mix it all. And then once it's all in, you have to have a guy come and sand it, which is going to be a couple thousand dollars. And to get out all the kinks and weird imperfections. But then again, it It really looks good. It is the most beautiful floor. Like, 
at the farmhouse, um, we had the original floors restored. And actually downstairs, we installed the floors because you couldn't get down to the original because there was too much like linoleum and craziness over it. So we installed salvage floors. I'm telling you, the first thing people notice when they walk in that house is the floors. They're like, these floors are gorgeous. Yeah. So if so you're willing to do it. all the work of, of getting that, I mean, these are the kind of floors where if you buy it from like a, a dealer, you know, they'll sell you antique heartwood pine for, you know, as cheap as $8 a square foot and as much as 15 to $20 a, a square, square foot. foot. And, you know, and that's the stuff where if you buy it, put it in and it's ready to go it's finished it's, it's beautiful yeah. it's perfect but you're like well okay. that's a lot of money obviously i'm sure people are like man you guys really like floors it's a big part of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. now what's interesting is this couple that owned a farm they had this beautiful place it overlooked the valley it's um, gorgeous they also have an airbnb and what they have is a yurt yes and when we started our airbnb you know we do what i hope everyone does research Who's our competition? You know, who's out there? How much are people doing it for? And they were one of the first ones on Airbnb in our area. Yeah. They have like 500... Reviews, uh, yeah. It's reviews because they've just been around for so much. And they rent this place all the time. And it's a mystery to us because it's just a yurt. It doesn't even have a view. Well... We... And they're getting bookings this month when we aren't. and <laughs> And they're charging... Almost as much as we are. And I don't know how they do it. They're charging more because her rate was 185 a night. And I'm like, wow, that's really good. That's for two people. The right. year it holds six people. And then it's $30 for every extra person after that. So it can be up to $300 a night. I mean, they've really, and they are, and they're really kind of back down some country roads. So they're not really close to anything. I mean, when 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 people think our place is rural, I mean, these people's place is rural. So, I don't know. I mean, God bless them, but it's kind of like one of those things where it's a mystery. I can't... The It's like an enigma. I can't figure out what what secret sauce they've done to do that. And when 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 I was telling her that, like, it's amazing, she was like, huh, I don't she know. She had no idea. She's I like, just, I don't know. I we mean, just, we rent it. Why wouldn't I do it like that? You know? I just... I. And she charges like $65 for cleaning, and it's a year. <laughs> I just, I couldn't figure it out. We couldn't figure yeah. it out. Um, and she's like, we also have another Airbnb where it's like a, it's. it's oh, it's, it's an like Airstream. An Airstream, and then this other, like, it's a shed. You know? They have like all these, all these properties <laughs> on their property, you know, yeah. which is good. They should do that. But I guess we were just like, we have no bookings this month, and these people are like, while we were picking up the wood, they were cleaning the yurt to like right. get it ready for that because it was a Friday. We were right. like, "What is going on?" Okay, I don't know. I think this might be interesting to people. Let's see. So, as we've been doing a edge renovation, as some of you as may know, it's a cash hole. You know, mm -hmm. it's just expensive. And as we're like adding things, it's getting it's more expensive. We're happy to it to do it because we're getting see all that it's as money afterwards but our thing is we're trying to get this done so we i needed some cash we tried to go to our bank who yes. we've taken a loans from and we wanted twenty thousand dollars to it's finish off this house so the bank was like yeah we'll loan you twenty thousand dollars but we'll do it against it's your house right so we need to get an appraisal and this and that and inspection and so it turned out it was going to cost us two thousand dollars in fees just to borrow twenty thousand dollars, so yeah. we're so we're going to pay ten percent of our loan, and then they're going to start charging us interest. That wasn't yeah. going to work. So what we did was, you know, we sell on eBay. Uh, those of you that don't really is know that we have a whole eBay. Uh, it's business that we talk at scavengerlife.com, and we it's use PayPal, and we use a program called uh, a Working Capital, where we could borrow. It's money from PayPal. Yeah. That really is low fees. There's no interest. So we borrowed fifteen thousand dollars and only have to pay a nine hundred dollar one time fee. Right, there's no interest. And then they just take it out of our eBay sales every time we make a sale. It's thirty it's well, it's percent. It's a sliding scale. You can you can say only take ten percent out, but that obviously takes you longer to pay it back. And they charge you a bigger fee. They charge you a bigger fee. So we were like, take the maximum amount for the shortest amount of time for the lowest fee. Right. 
Um, and the cool thing was is that because we have this long history with PayPal, they, they see our sales and all that, it took a minute? I mean, how long did it take to get It literally took a the, minute. Yeah. I mean, you go through the process and you're like, okay, the, answer this question, answer this question, answer this question. And then they give you the amount that they're willing to loan you. And then they're like, they transfer the money to your account uh, in one minute. It was, and we had been spent, we had been spending weeks talking to the bank, filling out paperwork, you know, making sure they were working on it. And, you know, and it was like, this happened. Although I will say this, I do believe that uh, you are going to pay taxes on that 15K because they consider that income. Sure. Um, so that's not free and clear. But like I told you, though, we're spending that $15,000 on expenses for the house. It's going to so be, yeah. It's Canada's income, but then you take it off as expenses. or. And I'll counter you on that. Right. You take it off in expenses, right. but it's depreciable. It's so depreciable. you can't. Right. I'm just going to be technical about yeah, that. You technical. can't you can't write it fully off in right. one year. But that's you're right. That's a tax. So anyway, that was interesting. Um, you know, I really it was great and and when it was I, so helpful. And when I told you know a friend of ours, he was like, "Huh, it sounds like a, a HELOC loan, mm. H E L O C." And I guess and we haven't gotten to that at level yet. But when you have enough property oh yes your bank will give you what's called a HELOC loan which right. is kind of like this where it's like a line of credit yeah so that way it, you don't have to get home appraisals and, and approvals and like and you can just say give me you know twenty thousand dollars and then it, you have to pay it back in a certain amount of time and it's interest only payments and sure, stuff. sure. but it gives you access to, to quick to cash, cash yeah so actually i talked to our banker about it and she was like well once you get this new a uh, rental finished and rented, yeah, and can prove that it's you know a, a fully and realized asset. We could probably do a HELOC loan, right? It's for you if so, you wanted another property if you or wanna, something. You know, because yeah. it, you're always checking out these <laughs> really cheap properties that did you imagine buying and I selling. I know, I know. Okay, well, let's answer some questions that people have. Okay, we have in. one voicemail. One? Yes, can you believe it? Uh, and our voicemail phone number is 540-407-8486. Hello, this is a Shampoo and Booze question. Jay, uh, I was wondering if you ever do this or if you ever heard of anybody doing this who has a rental where um, my wife, she's a germaphobe. So every time we go somewhere and go to a hotel, she has to tell me for the 10 millionth time that you know, they don't wash those blankets. They only wash the sheets. And uh, she keeps commenting, as, you know, why some hotels probably do wash the blankets. And why don't they put a, a note out or, a, you know, a sign out or something? Or she goes, I would think uh, people would be much more apt to go there if they made it known that this hotel washed the sheets and the blankets, all of the bedding. I wonder what your thoughts are on that. I've never heard of a hotel doing that, but she keeps asking me or <laughs> or bringing it up. And I, I assume hotels or Airbnb hosts don't want to do that because it kind of raises that whole issue of other people staying there. But I wondered what your thoughts are on that. Thanks. Okay, th this is my initial thought. If you are going to a hotel that has just those like horrible polyester blankets you are going to a very low rent motel uh, or which, hotel. Which, real quick, we've stayed in many of those. Yes, but and just, I've stopped staying in those. But just rest assured, those places are probably and not they're washing. not washing those blankets. And when they make the beds, they're putting those blankets on the floor. So the just in terms of hotels, if if you're staying at a nicer hotel that probably costs more money, um, they have a duvet cover. So they're washing those duvet covers every time. I'm pretty sure they are. In our rental, that's what we do. Uh, we do not have just a plain old comforter with no cover. We have a comforter, but it has a cover that gets changed every single time. Um, when we first hired our cleaner, she had no idea what that thing was. She's like, what are you doing? You know, I was like taking the comforter out of the duvet cover i was like switching it and she was like she's like that's such a great idea and i'm like what do your other cabins do she's like they just have like a blanket and i'm like and they wash the blanket every time that must be a pain and she goes they never wash the blanket <laughs> which you're correct they don't wash the blanket yeah. but 
what I'm trying to say is if you're staying in places that you feel like aren't doing the laundry, you should not be staying in places like that. Uh, I should have a high enough um, rating and price so that you know I'm doing all the laundry. Yeah. You know what I mean? That yeah. Is- yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I think he's, I mean, I think what he's, what it sounds like he's asking is, why don't we do that? You know, like, why, why don't, don't we, we put out a sign? Or why don't we like put it on our listing? Or I, I, I guess just because I don't, I, I don't know. You should assume that all the laundry is done. I feel like. People come in, and I think you can just tell because everything looks clean. crisp and clean. And if people do those things, like on Hotel Impossible, Impossible. and strip the bed and look, they're going to see there's no dust, there's, there's no, no stains, stains because you know we. Because I'm obsessed clean. with that stuff too. Yeah. Trust me. Watch Hotel Impossible, and you know what I'm talking about. Then when you have your own place. But- but You're I wonder so if there is a big enough a market of like germaphobes where they're they want in the a listing there to be a separate paragraph that says every time you know house is deep cleaned every time and all laundry yeah. you know all bedding is washed I just I think <laughs> it's, it just, I think it's weird to say it because yeah. then you're assuming that people are thinking you don't do that like I don't know I don't know yeah. it feels weird to me but but I, I know agree. but I understand what you're saying like yeah. I I totally like I totally hear you I we stayed at a place in New Orleans last year and uh I got under the covers and I looked and I was like, oh, this is just a blanket, and it doesn't have a duvet cover on it, and I'm pretty sure they didn't wash it from the people before me. So I'm in bed thinking about this. Like, yeah. you Don't think about anything when you eat out, I promise. <laughs> You've worked in kitchens, don't you know. It. Yep. Thanks for your question. Okay, you can check out the blog at shampooandbooze.com for the links we talk about and to join the conversation. You can leave a question or a comment on our voicemail line. We'd love to hear from you. The phone number, again, is 540-407-8486. You can subscribe to us through iTunes or YouTube, so you always get the latest episode. You can listen to our other podcast, where we talk about how we sell stuff that we scavenge to fund our renovations, and that is scavengerlife.com. Bye!